Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist, and it's been a little while since I made a video because I've been busy with programming stuff, but this evening I was messing around with um, geometry nodes and I made this sort of strange contraption. I'm kind of, I've been interested in a while, so obviously in 3.6 they made the simulation nodes um, not experimental, they're part of the actual official blender. And the obvious way to use the simulation nodes is for, you know, particle systems or explosions or, you know, maybe things growing, some sort of animation that you can render. But since I often don't render things in Blender, but I'm more using it to create content for Unity, I don't think there's very many ways you could get sort of a simulation that you made um, exported in some way that would be useful. But a different sort of use that I've been interested in thinking about a little bit is ways that you could use the simulation nodes to generate some sort of a me to generate some sort of a mesh with some sort of an iterative process like this where I am doing this sort of flood fill to create like a navigation mesh type of an idea which I don't know you might even be able to just make something like this with the old system not doing it over multiple frames but also I thought of things like could you could you make some sort of a geometry node system that was a simulation where you could give it an input mesh and then like erode it in some way or you know do some sort of an operation to create detail on it. Um, I've experimented with that a little bit without a whole lot of without a whole lot of success. I've also thought about you know doing something like some sort of a plant generation thing that could like grow around a building. But basically, the idea being there's probably ways you can use the simulation to generate some sort of a mesh that you then freeze in its final position that could be useful. So I haven't found anything yet where I, I made it and I was like, oh wow, that's game changing. Um, most of the time I haven't felt like I got a better result than something I could have done a different way with the old geometry nodes. And the obvious downside of using the simulation nodes like this is it takes time to build the result because it has to iterate however many times is necessary. Like this is a pretty small mesh, but it already takes 200 200 something frames to fill the whole thing. Anyway, so that was just an idea that I've been toying around with. So I thought today we could go through this node group and sort of see, and then maybe that'll spark some ideas, I don't know. It's just an experiment, really. We do a planar decimation on the result of that and triangulate it. So you can see it's not it's not bad. If I, um, if I were to model a nav mesh by hand, obviously it would be a lot cleaner, especially like these stairs here. But it's an interesting experiment, I guess. All right, let's just go through the nodes real quick because it's been a while since we've done that. So we can see everything happens inside of the, the loop, and what the loop does is it finds all of the boundary edges and extrudes them in a direction that's perpendicular to the edge direction. Now that means that these two edges would extrude into the same space like this, so we'd have this quad would be doubled, but rather than trying to filter those out, we can just merge those two vertices together after the fact and fix any normal problems that we have. So let's go through the node. First, we have a simulation loop, um, and all we need to put into that is the geometry. I have this float value that's mistakenly named boolean, and that's just mapped to this color so that I could test and see like which faces were new faces versus which ones were um, that stayed around or whatever. So that is not necessary. That's strictly for debugging. So let's turn that off. So the first thing, if you have geometry and you try to extrude it, if we try to extrude the edges here, and if we just steal this offset value here, you can see our the first problem is that the edges stay connected or the corners. So if you have this edge here and this edge here share this vertice, they won't be split when they extrude. There's not the individual option like there is on the faces isn't there for edges for some reason. So the way to solve that problem is um, I'm going to duplicate all the edges I want and those edges will be the edges that only have one adjacent face. So edge neighbor's face count equals one is the selection. We're going to duplicate those elements. So that gets us just the edges, duplicating edges. And then we can split those edges, which will mean, which will mean that each edge no longer shares a vertex in the corners. Then we want to take those edges and extrude them. And the direction we want to extrude them in is the 
edge direction, so the position of the first vertex minus the position of the second vertex gives us the direction of the edge. If we do a cross product with z, or negative z in this case, it will point in a direction that's perpendicular to both of those. So if you have the edge direction and z, perpendicular is going to be this way or this way. Now that's a problem because as the normals flip and like different edges get added in different orders, that we, we can't guarantee that it will always extrude outwards from what we've already created. So you can see the problem here if I turn that off that it comes out and then it should be going in this direction because there's space to grow in that direction. But because of the order of the vertices in the edge, it's looking in this direction, which there's already a face there, so it just stops growing. So my solution for that is just to take the frame modulo 2, which will basically alternate between 0 and 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, as the frame number goes up. Change that to negative 1 or 1, and then scale the normal direction, or the extrusion direction by that value so that every other frame it, it looks in the opposite direction. That means the simulation takes twice as long. It's not like a real solution, it's like a hack solution, but it's so much easier than trying to figure out which of the, than trying to like sort the vertices somehow and figure out which directions away from the mesh island. So having figured out that direction, we can just extrude away from our original face but then we want to do some additional filters because you can see on the next iteration here, this edge would get extruded out in this direction, and that would put it off the edge of the the mesh, like the world that we're trying to create a nav mesh for. And then also, if we go a little further here, you can see that pretty soon here we're going to have an iteration where we extrude out in this direction, and it would go through the wall. So we'll do that in sort of two steps. The first thing I want to do is do a raycast from the point we're extruding in the direction we're extruding to see if it hits like a wall. But obviously that could be problematic if this ground sloped up slightly, then it would hit the ground. So since I want to be able to go up slopes to some degree, I'm actually going to shoot this ray at an angle. Now that's not a perfect solution either, because it could be the case that if this window was a little lower to the ground, then this ray cast would actually not hit the wall here, but could go like hop the window. But for the sake of this test, I decided that was close enough. So. All of that's going to be done with ray casts. So the first ray casts here are for each vertex of the edge. So vertex 1 and vertex 2. I want to do a ray cast from that source position in the direction of the extrusion that we calculated, plus an upward direction scaled by our scale, our grid size value. So then we just do a ray cast against an object, and that object's the mesh here of this building. So then we can just take the is hit value from those ray casts. We actually want the opposite. We want to know if we didn't hit anything. That means there's free space. We can combine those with an and and then extrude any of the edges where neither of the ray casts from the vertices hit a wall. Then after we've extruded, we have to do some additional checks. So now we're at this point, we've extruded outwards and you can see we have some invalid edges here because some of the edges will extrude off um, over a, a place where there's no world underneath it. That'll also happen like up here if you go off the balcony, there won't be anything underneath. So then to filter those out, what we're going to do is we're just going to do a ray cast from a point above it down. And that again just ensures that we can do a go up and down slopes. And if that ray cast fails to hit anything, then we know we stepped off into empty air and we can delete that edge. So that's just up here. We do a ray cast from one meter above our position in a downward direction. And if that does not hit anything and our vertex is a top edge from our extrusion, then we can delete those edges. Then we have another problem that happens sometimes. So I noticed it on this door here where sometimes if an edge lines up just right where this edge looking this way doesn't hit any of this wall, it can actually fill in inside of the wall. And so my solution to filter those out was again to delete some geometry. This time we're going to delete an edge. And the edge we want to delete is where the edge is a side edge. And that edge, the position, if we take the position of the two vertices that make up that edge and subtract them from each other, we get the direction of that edge. And then if we do a ray cast from the position of the second vertex towards the first vertex using the length of the edge, and if that hits anything, then we want to delete that edge because there's a wall between the two vertices that make up the edge. So if we simulate this again, you can see with that delete geometry on that when it gets here, it will go around the wall instead of going through it. 
So once we've done that, we just want to set the positions of the new vertices that we extruded to be where the raycast down hit. So you can see here, here we raycast from one meter above, two meters down, and wherever that hits. If it's a hit, if it doesn't hit anything, we delete it. If it does hit something, we're going to set the position of that vertex to wherever it hit. Then here we capture an attribute. That's just that counting thing for the colors, so it's not actually necessary. And then we have our mesh from the previous frame that we calculated here, and we have our new extrusion that we calculated, and we just want to merge those two together with the join geometry. That means we'll have some overlapping faces potentially, so then we just merge by distance. Set that to be half the distance of the grid size. Um, so probably add an input and multiply this by half would be the proper way to do that, I guess. Um, then there was another problem where when it was going up the stairs, because it starts at the bottom here, because it starts at the bottom here and this edge is slowly stretched, it keeps just extruding it even though it should be broken. So to, so to remove those, I just did a check, simple dot product check of the edge direction to see if it, how vertical it is. If it gets too vertical or steep, then um, we'll delete that edge. So again, deleting edges where the edge direction, so position one minus position two, normalized with the dot product to Z being one, if we take the absolute value of the dot product, so then whether or not the edge is pointing up or down, as it approaches a vertical alignment, it will come closer and closer to one. It'll be zero if it's perfectly horizontal. And then we can just check if that value is greater than some number, some steepness, I pick 0.75. And if that's true, we'll delete the edge. So that gives us this. Oops, that gives us. So that's the other thing that's kind of annoying about these simulations. Um, you have to view the output of the simulation output, or you can't rebuild it. And you're constantly having to rebuild the result to see if what your change worked. So it's a lot slower than the sort of real-time feedback you get editing a normal group. Anyway, you can see that removed those long edges. So then there's another problem, which is that uh, if we come back here, you can see that where things have looped around in different ways. So you can see like it might have gone in this way first, and then this came around here. And so because they were going opposite directions, the normals get flipped. So, so this face might be pointing down and this face might be pointing up. And that creates this weird shading artifact. So to fix that, we can just do a flip faces where the normal of the face is pointing uh, down. So to do that, you can just do the normal into a dot product with Z and whatever face, it, I don't really care which it was, so I just plug that into flip as a selection. So if the face is pointing up, it would be true. I guess I should do negative one so that they're pointing up would probably be better. So you need to see those would be blue, whereas if it was one, they'll all be red. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. It was just to make them all consistent. Um... And then having flipped the faces, we've built our mesh. We can, we can put that into the output of the loop, which would feed back in and we could repeat however many times we wanted to iterate over it. So that's how this nav mesh generator thingamabob works. And then once you have this result to reduce resolution, you can add a decimate. Planar, I think, probably works best. That makes tons of ingons, so then I just like to add a triangulate so that you can kind of see. I probably wouldn't actually use this as a nav mesh still because it's um, there's too many faces here which would create too many nodes, but I don't know. It was just an experiment. I thought it was kind of interesting. And I still think there's a cool idea there somewhere. I don't think this is quite it, but somewhere there's a cool idea using the simulation nodes to iteratively generate some sort of a mesh. Um, so I don't know. Maybe I'll give you an idea. But um, but I wanted to make a video of some sort because I haven't made one in over a week and I was just playing around and thought this was kind of interesting. So hopefully you found it interesting as well. Um, other than that, I've got my nodes here, which are all available on Gumroad. If you haven't checked those out, you should. 
I've got some other cool things over there as well. Color palette generator and some scripts and I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I've been doing a lot more programming recently. I thought about making some videos about that, but I know most people who watch my videos probably are interested in Blender because that's primarily what I've um, put out videos about. I was kind of having some success just making some videos about what I was working on the last couple days, um, but then I switched gears a little bit and started doing more programming, and that's a little harder to make videos about, so I don't know. I'll have to think about that some more. I did kind of want the channel to be focused on game development in general rather than just Blender specifically, but Blender is easier to make videos with to some extent. So anyway, that's kind of my thoughts. That's all I've got for this one. Thanks for watching.